The Secretary to the Treasury has implored Ugandans to willingly pay taxes at the time fears abound that the introduction of a raft of retrogressive taxes on products such as fuel and building materials could lead to soaring inflation. By the way, contrary to what you, you think and you discuss, Uganda has the second lowest tax burden in East African region. Our tax burden, according to the Heritage Foundation, which ranks all countries in the world, it's an independent organization, international. Our tax burden stands at 11.8%, and we are ranking in the world 140th, 140. Down is there, out of the 171 countries. The only country in East Africa that has a lower tax burden than Uganda is Tanzania at 11.7%. Kenya is 17.4%, Rwanda 17.1%, Uganda you are at 11, but we are more vocal, <laughs> we, we think we are the ones who are going to die of tax. <laughs> the Secretary to the Treasury argued that a country needs adequate taxes to be able to roll out improved service delivery. The top number one tax burden in the world is Denmark. Denmark taxes its people at 46.3%. 46, Uganda you are at 11. But now when a Ugandan goes to Denmark, he says, I wish my country had these roads, had no potholes. This comes at the time Uganda's economic outlook remains dim as the shilling continues to slide against global currencies, precipitating the risk of debt distress for a country with a voracious borrowing appetite. According to figures in the Central Bank's State of the Economy report released this week, foreign exchange reserves declined by $490 million due to mounting external debt repayments and the Bank of Uganda's inability to purchase foreign exchange from the market due to the depreciation of the shilling. The reserves now cover 3.4 months of imports, excluding oil project-related imports which is below the required four months input cover threshold. In the last four years, Uganda's public debt has registered an upsurge from 57.1 trillion shillings to 96.1 trillion shillings. And the cost of debt servicing has increased from 3.7 trillion to 8.3 trillion shillings. This as the country remains caught in a public debt safety trap in which a favorable debt position based largely on data sustainability results falsely signals that the country has more fiscal headroom to borrow. Speaking about the recent uproar by traders in regard to the enforcement of the electronic fiscal receipting and invoicing solution, IFRIS, which led to the closure of shops in Kampala, Mr. Gobi, who is also the Finance Ministry's Permanent Secretary, says Uganda Revenue Authority's tax enforcement is a step in the right direction. Now, because Ugandans are not used to paying the tax, they avoid some evade. They don't want a system which makes sure that you can't have, uh, afford to evade. <laughs> Early this week, several traders in Chikubo, a bastion for commerce in downtown Kampala, closed their shops in protest against what they termed as the unfair enforcement of EFRIS. EFRIS has come and EFRIS is going to stay to ensure that we know how much have we earned from a transaction and we, is it what we have declared? In a bold move, the taxman is seeking to introduce a raft of new taxes to raise revenues as it seeks to raise value-added tax collections and rental income, amongst others. But there are fears that this aggressive approach could sound the death knell for businesses, which are attempting to emerge out of the post-pandemic financial chokehold. Experts also fear that the tax regime is putting pressure on disposable income and curbing consumption, which is bad for businesses that are considering returning to informality. By September 2022, 
a survey by URA, the NGO to our weather, and Tax Justice Alliance revealed that nearly 55% of businesses that opened shuttered as a result of heavy taxation, high cost of inputs, and COVID-19 disruptions. At the end of the day, we shall collect revenue, small revenue from each person, each person paying will make more money for us than now putting the burden on a few people who are compliant and then we leave out others. With the exponents of what they deem as progressive policies calling for the widening of the tax base to shift the burden from a small cluster of taxpayers, there's a suggestion to target high net value individuals in the real estate sector as well as commercial farmers. There is also need to halt the siphoning of funds through illicit financial flows, through sophisticated breaches like registering offshore shell companies in safe havens and secrecy jurisdictions and trade misinvoicing, which according to the Economic Policy Research Center led to the astronomical loss of 25 trillion shillings in taxes between 2008 and 2018. Mr. Ismail Magona, the Director of Budget at the Finance Ministry, says URA is rolling out a robust system to target those who evade taxes in opaque sectors such as real estate, which are usually a conduit for money laundering. I think URA has a system that they have deployed, and that system has first of all helped to map out uh, the rental uh, facilities. And, but if they are having issues with the, with the enforcement, I'm sure that there could be ways of ensuring that everybody who is supposed to pay should pay. Uh, but I think it's something that we can discuss with URA because they haven't reported that they have those issues. So as long as they have not reported, then they, what, what, what else can we do? So once they report that there are issues, I am sure that there is somebody in this country who can make sure that whoever is supposed to pay, pays. Yes. Ms. Regina Navuga, a tax justice advocate at the Southern and Eastern Africa Trade Information Organization, Siatini, told NTV that civil society has for long implored the government to bring into the tax bracket individuals who are high net value earners. Those who earn more, like the commercial farmers, pay at least a 0.5% on their turnover because we believe that most of them have, um, they keep records, government can trace them, even if they are 50 in a country. Adding that the government ought to revise the pay as you earn threshold for low income earners. We've advocated for and called upon government to review the tax bans from 235 to say 400, 600, so that we have more disposable income. Ms. Sophie Nampe Wunjuba, who is a finance and development coordinator at Oxfam, Uganda, says the few individuals who are paying taxes, estimated at 1.4 to 1.5 million taxpayers in the register, are overburdened by rising taxes. We know it, it would cost us more to, to, to get into taxing, for example, the informal sector, but we can't shy away from it and we need to, to get into that and, and, and tax the informal sector. How can we do that? We have a very well set uh, local government structure that goes down to the parishes and the villages. The LC1 knows who operates where and what they do in terms of business. And they are able to... If, if they worked well with revenue authority, they would be able to uh, identify uh, different businesses and therein government can be able to tax or, or reduce their cost on administration if they work with the local government structures to be able to collect the taxes better. Ms. Njuba believes that Uganda continues to lose large amounts of taxes through double taxation agreements, which favor wealthy individuals and multinational firms to avoid paying taxes through sophisticated loopholes. For some, for example, you'll find a withholding tax with, with an, a country where you have an agreement could be 5%, yet if the agreement was not there, we could be getting maybe 15% or 30%. The international taxation system comprises more than 3,000 bilateral tax treaties, also known as double taxation agreements. 
once signed, the majority of tax treaties supersede domestic tax law for the time they are in force. Uganda currently has about a dozen such agreements as tax experts fear that these legally binding agreements cripple revenue collection. For instance, DTA partner states such as Mauritius and Netherlands, which are well-known tax haven jurisdictions notorious for enabling treaty shopping account for a large number of foreign direct investments in Uganda. As a method of avoiding taxes, many multinational firms which are domiciled in their respective countries rely on shell companies registered in these tax haven jurisdictions to avoid taxes with countries they have signed DTAs with. <laughs> The pressure to collect more taxes comes barely a year before Uganda enters a high-obtained period of campaigns ahead of the 2026 general elections. Experts fear that much of the revenue collected will not be spent on the most productive sectors of the economy, but will be doled out on sustaining a bloated administrative structure and clientele patronage networks. <laughs>